Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a stained glass pattern using the sketchbook app on your iPad. The whole purpose of this assignment is to make your own stained glass pattern, okay? You are not finding a pattern that already exists and you're not tracing a stained glass project that somebody has already made. You are taking your own image you're using a picture as a reference, and you are creating a stained glass pattern from that image. I'm going to start with something easy just to show you guys how to get started. Um, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this because if I were doing this for an assignment, I would spend probably over an hour drawing it, and I want this to be a short video. So before I click done, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just by zooming in. Um, you can also twist your two fingers and rotate it, zoom in and out, and then click done when you have it how you want it. Most important part is to click this plus button to add a new layer. Your layers are like layers of paper that are on top of whatever layers are down here. So this is our photo layer. This is the picture that we brought in. Um, by the way, I brought the picture in by clicking this button of the little mountains and the plus sign. So, I have created a new layer. I make sure that layer is selected and highlighted with blue. That means that I'm drawing on that layer. My tools are on the left-hand side, and I am using the pen tool. It's the fourth one down. And then I'm just using the color black because my pencil drawing here is gray so the black will stand out um, if your picture has black in it already like if you're using a coloring page with black lines trace it with a different color besides black so you can see it like blue or red all right the first thing i'm gonna do is turn on this predictive stroke what this does is it straightens your lines for you and it simplifies your shapes so if you have a shaky hand like I do, uh, it'll help you draw straighter lines and neater shapes. What I'm going to do first is outline my image. And the whole purpose of this is to simplify your shapes. Basically, we are creating shapes that can be cut out of glass. They have to be cuttable. So we are simplifying shapes. Also, if you have a lot of pointed edges, you'll want to make them more round. I'll explain as I go. I'm just doing small parts, a little bit at a time. Because if I mess up, I'll push the undo button. All right, um, another purpose or goal is to have all of your lines connect. Um, to see your progress, you can hide the original layer. I just clicked on that little eyeball icon. And then you can see exactly what you have drawn and what you still need to draw. So I'm going to unhide that layer. And I'm going to continue to draw. I'm going to trace the eye. And I'm going to trace the nose, but I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because that will be easier to cut out of glass. I didn't like how that came out. Eh, that's okay. Like I said, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this just for the sake of the video. Um, now, you can take out small details. Like, I didn't really need to keep the spot around his eye. But maybe this is an image of my pet bunny. And if I don't put that spot around his eye, it won't look like my pet anymore. So sometimes you have to keep details, even though they might be hard to cut out, um, just for the sake of your picture. Um, we will have to break that up into more shapes, but I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. I also want to keep the white on his, I'm sorry, the black on his ears. So I'm just going to trace this. Now, see, I traced that a little bit different. If I were to trace it exactly how it is, 
look at how skinny that shape is. Plus we have a point right there, which we can't just have points. We can't cut this black piece would be really hard to cut out because of this point right there. Um, and then we have this weird point here. So instead of putting a break line here and then um, add, you know, connecting this to another line, I'm just going to simplify this a little bit. And I'm going to connect it from this line. That's good. I'm just making this white shape a little bit thicker. Okay, and so since this is a point here, we do have to create a break line. So there are a couple different ways you can do this. Um, from the deepest part of that curve right here, I could just split this shape in half. And then I can hide my picture to see what it looks like. I don't love the straight line. So I'm going to try to maybe connect it like this with the curve. See what that looks like. That looks better. Okay. Now we need to connect this line to here and this line to here. All right. So, so far we have one, two, three, four, five completed shapes. All right, now let's finish the feet. I am going to connect this line to here, this line to here, this one here, and this foot there. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Looks good. So we need to break up this whole shape, right? So let's just connect. I'm going to show my picture. Let's connect that right there. Um, and then we could even add in this little black patch on his chest. And we could even add a little tail here. All right, let's hide our picture. All right, everything looks really good, except you guys know that you can't just cut a circle out of a piece of glass and pop it out. So we need to split this shape into several other shapes. Um, so one thing I'm gonna do is connect the nose to here. And then maybe I'll add one here. Now, the way I think about it is wherever I have a curve, I want to split that curve in half so I don't have to cut that curve out of one piece. I'm splitting it into two pieces. So I'm going to do that here. And this might actually be good. So this is all one piece which that's a pretty big piece. If you wanted to, you could split it up again. And move your break lines around to see which, which line looks best. Um, try straight lines and try different curved lines going different directions to see what you like best. I'm probably just going to keep it like that. So let's continue our numbering. Five, six, seven eight nine oops and then we still need to break up this shape here so i'm just going to split that into two just like that now this is still a pretty deep curve i could split it in half again but then i'm making a lot of small shapes and i don't want to cut out a bunch of tiny shapes so maybe I cut this shape and this shape out on the glass saw. All right, let's continue numbering. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, oops, 19. All right, that's perfect because if I wanted to use this pattern that I created, for my Suncatcher project, I can. 
For your Suncatcher project, you need 10 to 20 pieces, not less, not more. So this bunny has 19 pieces. This would be perfect. But maybe I already have a different idea, or maybe I just don't want to do this one for my project. You don't have to use this pattern that you create for your Suncatcher project. But if you want to use it for your Suncatcher project, make sure you have between 10 and 20 pieces. Okay, so when I'm done with this, to save this, I'm going to click in the top left corner to click on that menu. It's right there. And I'm going to click um, save. And then I'm going to export to files. I can save it to my gallery um, or I can click share. Um, and then just click flatten image. Just make it a PNG. Um, and then I'm just going to click Save Image. Okay, so now it's saved to my camera roll. If I click Save, um, Export to Files, it's asking me where I want to put it into my files. I just want it to go into my camera roll. Um, yeah, so make sure you click Share. All right, um, next thing you do is upload this to your practice. Pick a practice image to use from Schoology, um, make it into a pattern, and you're gonna submit that practice on Schoology. Then you are gonna find your own image that you wanna make into a stained glass pattern, upload it into the sketchbook app, try your best to make it into a stained glass pattern. Don't worry if it's not perfect, you're going to submit that to the rough draft assignment on Schoology. I will then look at it, make some edits, and comment on it, and then you can open it up tomorrow, and you can make those changes and then submit it to the final draft of your pattern design. All right, good luck, guys.